portion of my book, Defender of the Open Door. I would like to begin by the recitation of Al-Fatiha, which is the opening chapter of the Quran, the noble book sent to the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It begins as so, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Arrahmanir Rahim Malik Yomidin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim Sirat al-Ladhinna an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-Maqdubi alayhim Waladdallin Ameen Inshallah, we will continue where we leave off in the following segments periodically throughout each day of the week. That is the intention. So we look forward to you viewing this each time we broadcast an episode. This is courtesy of Soul Journey of Life. To begin with, I would like to bring our attention to Surah Al-Baqarah, one of the uh, surahs or chapters of the Quran. This is the second chapter. We will turn our attention to Ayat 257. It says, what roughly translated into English means, Allah is the guardian of those who believe. He brings them out of darkness into light. And as to those who disbelieve, their guardians are the shaitans, the evil whispering ones, who take them out of the light into the darkness. They are the inmates of the fire. In it they shall abide. Today, Muslims all across the world are finding themselves living in a time in which true knowledge and understanding are under grave attack at all of its fronts. Innovations have become rampant. The hypocrites are striving hard to bring down the fullness of the sharia to a ritual of mere lip service, while the innovators are trying hard to find various ways to simply blend in with the many methodologies of cultural fashions of the worldly kafirun, that is, the people who reject the truth. Various countries from around the world have become so fearful of the West that they will hesitate in the implementation of the Sharia law. Much of such ignorance has led to the blind following of schools of thoughts, techniques of sheikhs, Sufis, and various well-spoken scholars. Many have gone further astray, persuaded by catchy metaphors, clever speeches, and the crafty technical talk of the various sets. In many cases, such leads them to complete abandonment of pure true Islam. Seekers of true knowledge are becoming far and few in between. True ijtihad, individual reasoning, and ijma, collective consensus, are now very close to non-existent. Many, many people today are becoming extremely dumb, deaf, and blind. Uneducated Muslims are being misled and led unaware into preference of the teachings of false religions, many of which propagate themselves using variations of the name of Islam and its tenets. Some of the leaders among these groups claim to be continuing prophets after the last prophet Muhammad wasalam. In reality, they are no more than false prophets with demented motives and selfish interests. For many Muslims, Islam has become, for the most part, a complete joke. For these hypocrites, 
Dean is only to be seen in public appearances. Their artificial observances of the obligatory acts of Islam, their phony recitations of the Quran, mumbling this and spitting that in the name of Allah, all while thinking absolutely nothing of it, wasting their lives away, completely intoxicated from sin. Their words mean nothing. They are only from their lips. There is nothing of them in their hearts. I quote from Surah Al-An'am, Ayat 70, And leave alone those who take their religion as play and amusement, and whom the life of this world has deceived, but remind them with it, the Quran, lest a person be given up to destruction for that which he has earned, when he will find no protector or intercessor besides Allah, and even if he offers every ransom, it will not be accepted from him. Such are they who have given up to destruction because of that which they have earned. For them will be a drink of boiling water and a painful torment because they used to disbelieve. If I may, I will also quote from the words of a very intelligent scholar upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified and exalted be he, has bestowed a certain knowledge destined for him to understand. A fellow Muslim by the name of Wahiduddin Khan, who states in a book, though small in size, yet containing much elevating wisdom. Islam means to denote one's life entirely to God. A man's soul should commune with God in this world. If this is not the case, it means that the spirit of religion is lacking. People may claim to believe in God, but their belief consists of attachment to empty rituals. They bring religion down to the level of their own consciousness and neglect the spirit of true submission to God. When this happens, people tend to ignore the spirit behind religious observances, and as a result, only outward forms survive. People Stop crying to the Lord in private. They are only interested in public espousal of Islamic causes. Mosques are crowded by worshipers, but the prayers do not exceed in illuminating their souls. People do not concentrate on abstinence and fasting, but rather on having lavish meals before and after the fast. The spirit of servitude is lacking in religious festivals, which become instead occasions for self-indulgence and ostentatious enjoyment. The Prophet's life ceased to be an example for his followers. Instead, they show their attachment to the Prophet by celebrating his anniversary and holding conventions in his honor. In short, when the spirit is lacking, religion is molded in the form of worldliness of its adherents.